Welcome once again to Over the Hill Outdoors. A couple of years ago, I made a video entitled How to Make an Igloo by Yourself. There has been an amazing amount of interest in that video, with thousands of viewer comments and questions posted. Rather than attempt a personal response to each viewer, I've decided to make this video to answer some of the most common questions and misconceptions about igloos. Hopefully those who ask questions about my original video will find the answers that they were looking for. The four most common questions I have received could be divided into four categories. One, uh, igloo construction method and shape. Two, um, igloo stability and igloo durability. A third might be uh, igloo ventilation. And last, a lot of questions about igloo temperature. So I'll try to address each one of those as I show you some video clips from a night that I recently spent in this igloo built in my front yard. I'll start with igloo construction method and shape. Some people seem concerned that I usually build my igloos using what I call a concentric ring method rather than the traditional method of placing blocks in an, an upward spiraling pattern. Just let me say this, I've used both methods and both work well. If you're serious about building your own igloos, I suggest you try both methods. After you've built a few, I'm sure you'll have a preference, but mine happens to be the concentric ring method, especially when I'm working alone. But it's just a matter of personal preference, and both methods result in functional, durable igloos if you build them correctly. I've also had a number of comments and questions about igloo shape. Some people seem to think that if it's not a perfect hemisphere or a perfect catenary, then it can't be a, what they might call a proper igloo. Once again, I say, go out and build a few igloos yourself. Then see which shape you prefer. From my own experience, I found the hemisphere dome to, me the, the, to be the most difficult one to get right, but they're still possible to build and they do work. It's much easier, however, to make a dome that is taller than it is wide. Now, I'm no mathematician or engineer, so I don't know the proper names for all those possible variations in igloo dome shape. I've heard terms used like catenary, parabola, hyperbola, but I just call them egg-shaped. And they will vary quite a bit depending on snow conditions and other factors. A number of viewers have also expressed concern that an igloo might collapse on them while they were sleeping inside and that they would therefore be buried and die under a huge pile of snow. First of all, I've never seen or heard of a properly built igloo collapsing by itself if the outside temperature remained below freezing. When temperatures do get warm and the igloo eventually does collapse, it's because individual blocks start to melt and shrink, thereby compromising the integrity of the overall structure. And you can definitely see that coming. But if for some reason you were sleeping in a melting igloo when it collapsed, you would be buried under soft snow, not rock-hard blocks of snow, and it would only be as deep as the typical block thickness, which is about 6 to 10 inches. So you would be able to get yourself out pretty easily. I've received quite a few comments and questions about igloo ventilation and whether or not it's safe to cook or to have even a, a small warming flame inside. Anyone who's ever built an igloo knows it's essentially impossible to make one airtight. The seams between blocks are never perfectly tight, and the result is you have small gaps and air holes scattered throughout the entire dome. When you're inside the igloo, 
and it's dark outside as it is here, you don't notice that there are many gaps and holes between the blocks. But here's the view at dawn, now looking at the same igloo walls and ceiling from the comfort of my sleeping bag. The dome looked pretty tight at night, but now in the daylight, you can see there are plenty of narrow gaps between the blocks and, and air holes that provide a degree of ventilation. Even now, if you, if you cover the igloo with an additional layer of snow, there's still going to be some air exchange through those cracks and seams. Then there's the, the entrance to the igloo, which allows for a significant amount of air movement in and out of the igloo, even if you hang a blanket or a coat over it like I did this particular night. But if you're still nervous about ventilation and you're not convinced, go ahead and put a vent hole in the dome ceiling. I've never felt the need for one myself and I've spent lots of nights sleeping in igloos. I typically do use a little stove inside my igloos for cooking, but I don't use it for long. I also will light a candle or two just for light but I don't let them burn while I'm sleeping. And I've never felt the need for any kind of warming fire inside my igloo. If you arrive at your igloo dressed warm enough for the outside temperature, you will certainly be warm enough inside the igloo without a warming fire, I promise. That brings us to the question of temperature inside an igloo. So numerous people have asked me, how can it possibly be warm inside an igloo made out of snow and ice. Perhaps the use of the word warm is a little misleading. What I really should say is it's not as cold inside an igloo as it is outside. And that's especially true when you consider wind chill. If it's windy outside, it will feel much better inside, even if the actual temperature inside were the same as outside, which it won't be after you've been inside the igloo for a while. So to answer some of your questions about igloo temperature, I actually brought a thermometer with me on this overnighter. This particular night, the outside temperature was relatively mild at 6 degrees Fahrenheit when I entered the igloo about 10 o'clock at night. The inside temperature at that time was nearly the same uh, at first, about 9 degrees. However, after I had been inside the igloo for a couple of hours, and had cooked a little bedtime snack, it was definitely warmer inside the igloo. When I finally got into my sleeping bag, the temperature inside the igloo was between 27 and 28 degrees Fahrenheit, more than 20 degrees warmer than the outside temperature. Probably the most common criticism I received from my earlier video was that I did not have a cold sink or a raised sleeping platform inside my igloo. Some viewers were convinced that I would freeze to death if I slept in that igloo. Well, I did sleep in it and I did not freeze. In fact, I slept very comfortably. The reason for a cold sink and or a raised sleeping platform is this. Cold air is more dense than warm air and will settle to the floor of the igloo. While the warmer air is lighter or less dense, rises and collects near the ceiling. And because of that fact, it's assumed, I guess, that you will be much colder sleeping on the igloo floor than, say, if you were sleeping near the ceiling. Personally, I've done both. And, and honestly, I have not noticed any big difference in comfort. In this particular igloo, I had a very small cold sink, only about maybe six inches deep, in the entrance tunnel. My sleeping bag was essentially then on the igloo floor. When I got up in the morning, I checked the temperature near the igloo ceiling. It was 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, about 10 minutes later, I checked it at the igloo floor. It was 23 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I checked the outside temperature. It was zero degrees. So, it was 23 to 25 degrees warmer inside the igloo than outside, and it was also warmer near the ceiling than the floor, but only by about two degrees. 
I was a little surprised that the temperature difference between the outside and the inside and between the ceiling and the floor weren't greater than they were. But it probably had to do with the fact that there was only a single person in the igloo all night and it had been hours since I'd used my candle and the cooking stove. But the most important temperature reading was the one that I measured inside my sleeping bag. It was a toasty 80 degrees when I woke up and I had a I had a very comfortable night even though I had slept on the igloo floor. So my advice is don't skimp when it comes to buying a good winter sleeping bag. There was one other question actually asked more often than any other by my viewers and it was why am I watching this video? I live where it never snows. I'm afraid I don't have a good answer to that one, but thanks for watching anyway, and thank you for watching. Good luck as you build that first igloo.